The second presenter is Takei Kenta. Their choice is theme two. Please start. Good afternoon. What is your favorite housework? Cooking or doing laundry? Well, my favorite is composting. Today, I'm here to talk about the potential of home composting and how each of us can progress towards sustainable development by doing it. When I began living by myself, I naturally fell in love with cooking. I loved observing natural ingredients turning into my delicious dinner in the kitchen. But whenever I cook, I was also feeling this guilt growing in my heart, and that's because I inevitably produced food waste. But it cannot be helped, you might say, and that's true. Personally, I'm not accustomed to eating banana peels or potato skins, so what I had to do with them was simply throw them away into the garbage bag, and sooner or later, they will be carried away, incinerated, or eventually put into a landfill where they end their life cycle. This chart shows the breakdown of household waste in Japan in 2019. Nearly a third of overall waste is coming from kitchens. In fact, it requires a huge amount of energy to incinerate food waste completely because about 70% of food scraps is moisture. And what is worse, when all the matters from the food waste is put into the landfill, it could emit methane gas, whose global warming potential is 25 times higher than that of carbon dioxide. Excuse me. In contrast, we have a more sustainable way of processing food waste called composting. Composting is a microbial process that converts organic matters into more usable organic soil. Actually, a lot of local governments in Japan are promoting composting at home to achieve a more responsible consumption and to take an action on climate change. But when you hear about composting, you might imagine something like this. In a garden or in a farm, some people might think it's visually unpleasant because it often comes with earthworms. And in the trend of urbanization, people might just find it difficult to live in a house with a proper garden in urban areas. Those might be some of the reasons why composting at home is thought to be difficult among people. According to a survey from last year that asked 298 households what they do with their food scraps, only 4.5% of them answered that they may compost out of them. And more than 80% of them simply had to throw them away. And I was one of them. I thought composting in my apartment was simply impossible because I didn't have a garden. But last year, I proved myself wrong. Actually, composting at home is as easy as everyday housework, like cooking and doing laundry. You don't need a garden. You can do it even in your apartment. Now, let me share with you a game-changing home composting method called Dambodu Composto, also known as Dampost. Dampost originated in Hokkaido so that people could compost even in the winter time. It is a simple and easy to make composting unit made of a cardboard box. It costs less than a thousand yen to build and it makes a huge difference to your life as a consumer. And this is also reassuring for those who are not fans of earthworms because this composting method only uses the power of microorganisms. And here are all you need to make a dampost. A cardboard box, peat moss, and rice husk ash called kuntan. Peat moss and kuntan are both available at a normal gardening shop, and they become the base for microorganisms to settle in. Cover the cardboard box with a poly bag to prevent leakage, put the base material into the box, and that is it. You are now ready to compost. All you have to do after that is keep adding food scraps from cooking every day. Microorganisms in the food waste will start living in the base material and form their microbial community. But as is the case with any housework, there are some techniques to do it right. The most common question to be asked about composting is, what can we put into the composting unit? Putting animal-based materials such as bones, eggshells, or meat isn't recommended because they take a long time to get decomposed or could be a source of smell. But you can put almost all plant-based materials, banana peels, potato skins, expired rice, you name it. You feed microorganisms with your food scraps, and they break them down as a thank you. One survey conducted by Kyoto City reveals that nearly 80% of food scraps produced while cooking is plant-based which means that this much of food waste can be put into a dampost instead of a garbage bag. The second most common question is, of course, doesn't it smell bad? 
I certainly had the same question before starting composting, and let me assure you, it actually doesn't smell bad at all as long as you stick to putting plant-based materials. But there are two things that I want you to keep in mind, which are oxygen and moisture. Just like us, microorganisms need oxygen and water to efficiently consume organics and to produce energy. So mix it once a day to give them enough oxygen and add some water from time to time to keep it from getting too dry. If you're doing it successfully, you can feel your compost getting warmer and warmer. This means that microorganisms are happy and very active to break down your food scraps. In a week or two, your food waste will be broken down completely. And this is my compost after three months of putting food scraps and a month of resting. Beautiful black compost that can be used as a natural fertilizer. Composting is really like magic that nature can spell on our food waste. Composting at home not only helps you lead a more responsible and sustainable way of life, but it also helps your community. Let's say you don't have a garden and you don't know what to do with your homemade compost. Not to worry. A lot of municipalities are collecting compost from citizens. I donated my compost to a recycle center in Sapporo City in Hokkaido. The compost will be used for growing vegetables in a city farm. If food scraps are thrown into the garbage bag, they end their life in a landfill. But if you compost them, they get reborn as a natural and chemical-free fertilizer and contribute to the local agriculture. Just imagine, one day as you walk through a supermarket in your town, you might pick up a vegetable that was grown with your homemade compost. How exciting is that? I want as many people as possible to explain this excitement and the charm of composting. But as I showed earlier, composting rate at home is still quite low, and we have a long way to go. How can we encourage more and more people to learn about composting and actually make them try it? Well, the greatest thing about Dampos is you don't need any special equipment or any expertise to get started. You can do it anywhere. Where there is food waste, there is a chance for composting. Therefore, Dampos can be a great teaching material for food and environment on many occasions and for anybody. So how about holding a class in a school where children learn how to make a Dampos and simultaneously understand the food circulation. Food scraps come from school kitchens and children will experience the power of microorganisms in front of their eyes. How about a cooking class where participants learn the joy of composting as well as cooking skills? If more and more people find composting actually easy and fun, our society can be a step closer to SDGs. Sustainable development is such a broad concept that it feels even overwhelming at times. But thinking about sustainability means caring about nature around us. The food we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe, they are all indispensable to sustain our lives. It starts from appreciating nature and simply be amazed by small things in it, small things such as microorganisms in the soil. Composting is a powerful, and manageable way to make a big difference in our society. So, together, let's cultivate sustainability with composting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we'll have the question and answer session from the judges. Judges, please. Hi, thank you so much for your inspiring presentation. I really enjoyed your enthusiasm. Composting is really great. I, I really agree with that. But um, if so many people start composting, yes. and, and there's so much compost in the city, usage of composting becomes a challenge. Because um, farmers, they want to be able to control when they use fertilizers. Yes. But compost is is a natural process, yeah. so you can't really con con control the timing yes. of, of when, 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 when the compost becomes available. Yes. And, and secondly, household garbage, I shouldn't say garbage, but <laughs> household food waste oftentimes include mixture of things, yes. and, and that could sometimes contain toxic uh, materials like metal or um, substances that are not good for the soil. Yes. How would you control that? Okay. So your first point was that um, the timing. 
So I don't think um, farmers uh, can use all the compost. They can still use fertilizers. And I believe that the compost consistency can be an aid for farmers. So um, it's more like a contribution rather than helping them entirely. So, and uh, for your second point, uh, which is the toxic, uh, I went to a recycle center in Sapporo City and I talked to the manager there and he said that um, the compost will go through secondary, um, proce um, secondary process so that um, it will be safe when used in farmers. So they actually um, add some heat so that nothing bad will remain in the compost. So um, I don't think that would be a great, uh, excuse me, a uh, big problem uh, when thinking about uh, toxic, toxic uh, chemicals. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have one more question from our second judge. Hi, thank you for that uh, passionate presentation. Um, so uh, can you please give us a little bit more insight um, on how you plan to engage a household or, or really the schools um, uh, in this? You know, how, how, does a, a, how, do you, how do you plan to have a family take part in, in this? Um, and can you tell us a little bit more about the cost as well? Okay, so... For the compost materials. Yeah, so as to get more and more people, like families or our schools, uh, be involved in this. I think it's important that we connect this to our community. So, if, so what cities can do is create some kind of um, community garden where people can gather and donate their compost and share them. And that way, uh, people will be willing to uh, donate their compost to the community uh, garden, and they will um, make more and more compost at home. And they will be able to see the circulation of our food um, that come from their households. So yeah, making this kind of a community garden or connecting this to a community is very important. And as, what was your second point? Excuse me. Cost. cost. So the cost of the mat material. OK, so uh, three things, cardboard box, kuntang, and peat moss. In Japan, you, can't, you, don't have, you don't even have to pay money to get a cardboard box. You can get it in the supermarket, and so it is free. Uh, as, and for kuntang and peat moss, it is less than a thousand yen uh, to buy them. Uh, so if you go to a normal home center or gardening shop in Japan, uh, you can purchase it anywhere. So it is, I went there and it was less than a thousand yen, so it is very easy to uh, purchase them. Thank you very much, and thank you, judges. Now let's go to the audience. We have a few questions, if you don't mind answering some questions. First question. In your presentation, you showed pictures of how Dan Post works. How much time does it take to be composted into Dan Post? OK, so normally it would take three to four months to uh, compost all of the food scraps. But you need to um, rest it for a month so that it will completely get decompo uh, decomposed and the compost will be made. Yeah. So I would say um, three to five months. It will take uh, three to five months. Thank you. Next, how do you plan to spread the system to people who live in apartments with little to no garden? Yes, so as I uh, answered in the previous um, question, I think it is important that we have a place where we can bring those uh, compost to. So if there's any um, community garden, or maybe you can search it online, uh, whether your municipality is uh, collecting, your com collecting compost from citizens. Yeah, so these two things are what you can do. Thank you, and final question. Will there be any programs to help transport materials and compost, or programs to provide materials to interested households? Uh, provide materials to households. Transportation programs. Transportation programs. So, I mean, how they can get the food scraps? Perhaps before making the compost or after making the, the compost, how to transport it from their home, I think. Okay, so, um, so one thing you can do is uh, really go online and uh, see if your municipality is collecting compost from citizens. Um, 
for example, there are so many uh, bodies who are uh, collecting uh, those compost. For example, recycle centers and some agricultural related uh, companies in Japan, they are, all, they are also collecting compost from citizens. Actually, they are buying them so you can get some money by giving them compost. So yeah, there are so many places you can bring your compost to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Takei Kenta. Wonderful presentation. Thank you.